Hey yo, football fans, it's another okay. great year. Yep. Fantasy football fiends, grab, grab your beer. Uh. Giving you the best draft tips for your pick. Starts and sits to the wave of wide fix. Woo. For my grabs galore, the stats that's hardcore. Triple F does it all, have y'all screaming more. So sit back, relax, let the experts prevail. JT Magnum, Siggy guns never fail. What's going on, fantasy football fans? My name is JT Magnum here along with Siggy Guns, and welcome to Fantasy Football Fiends Week 10 of our Stardom Sidem show. And uh already always week 10. Yeah, already. I know. It's going by so fast. And and just to let you yeah, guys yeah. know, always read our description. We always want to talk about the show right off the bat. Always read the description because we do record this show on Tuesdays, a day after um, you know, all the NFL games are played, obviously, Sunday and Monday. And uh, we're not sure of, you know, who's going to play or who's going to start sometimes, you know, because of injuries and things like that. So we're not quite sure. You know, we're basically making our predictions and making our choices and everything on a Tuesday, like I said, and recording this early. So so if there's any changes, anything happens, we get updated on any kind of injuries. We always update everything in the description. So make sure you check that out daily. Uh, also. For those of you who are new to the show, we have a ticker at the bottom. Those display our Week 10 rankings for quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and defenses. We don't do kickers because we just don't really care about kickers. But um, we always feel kickers is, is nothing. But those are the weekings just the, the rankings just for Week 10. So, you know, if there's a player on by or anything like that, they probably, they, well, they better not be in there because I, ch- I check them every week. But <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I don't make a mistake and throw somebody in there. But, but you know that's what that's there for your for your uh, viewing pleasure and we don't talk about the elites we don't talk about the elite players when we when we really when we when we, when we do the show the only time we ever talk about elites is when we talk about sits but we don't really you know we don't tell you to start Peyton Manning when obviously it's it's obvious that you start Peyton Manning so we we don't talk about those kind of players we talk about the second tier players the other players that you know people might not know that much about or if you do know about them you, you know we we uh, we're telling you to take a risk on them so that's what we do um, also, um, at the end, you can always leave comments, leave, uh, you know, great feedback. We've been getting lots of that and always leave your questions at the end of the show. So let's get right into injuries this week. Uh, so, so far from what I know of, Arian Foster was hurt. Nick Foles is gone. He's, he broke his collarbone, I believe. Uh, Giovanni Bernard is hurt. Yeah, six to eight weeks. Yeah, Tony Romo is hurt. We're not sure if he's going to play this week against Jacksonville. Uh, Wes Welker's hurt. Lamar Miller's hurt for the Dolphins. So those are the injuries that we know of so far. I'm not sure if there's any other ones. Um, we're not still not sure about Calvin Johnson. Um, AJ Green played last week, so he's a, he's the guy that you can now insert back into your lineups. Uh, but other than that, let's get right into the uh, the waiver wire picks. Who's your three? Oh, real quick, also the week nine buys this week: Indianapolis, Minnesota, New England, San Diego, Washington, and Houston. So a lot of good quality quarterbacks. A lot buys. of good a week ten buys. Um, the uh, good quality quarterbacks still uh, are going to be you know on a bye week you know, with Andrew Luck, Tom Brady, Philip Rivers. Yeah. Um, a lot of good running backs out that week. So and receivers: T. Y. Hilton gone. Uh, Brandon LaFell, who's yeah. been playing crazy good, like out uh, Deshaun Jackson. So you know now's another good week where you have to really check your lineups and you know really check for those waiver wire picks or you know insert somebody else that you have on your bench that might have a good game. So who's your three? Well, let's get into the waivers. Who's your three waiver wire pickups of the week? Jeremy Hill, Adrian Peterson, and Terrence West. Not going to talk about Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is uh, on the verge of accepting a plea deal that's where he's uh, pleading guilty to a misdemeanor charge, not a felony charge. And under the collective bargaining agreement, um, especially since he's on this exempt list, they have it to where most people, all the analysts and experts in the player associations, etc., are pretty much saying that since it's a misdemeanor, he can't be suspended for something like you know what originally was the felony charge. So what that means is he's already served eight games, and he's not obviously the Minnesota's on a bye this week, I believe. But this means that he could have been possible. Goodell would actually say, okay, he did his time, you know, with the eight games that he's already missed. If he's guilty, let's say they do the six games, quote unquote, since he was paid on this exempt list, he might just be fined. He might be on probation, etc., and he might get to go ahead and be reinstated and play whenever Minnesota comes back from his bye week. So I would wow. say that this is a play here for a guy that obviously is elite when he plays. You might as well go make the move now if you have space in your bench. 
It's it's a it's a toss up. We don't know what Minnesota might do to punish him outside of this. But knowing that it's a misdemeanor, I don't think they can do a whole lot. So we'll see. I, I got a feeling that's a good pickup. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a good pickup if he's allowed to play. If he if if they if they allow him Should to play be. somehow, then then yeah, obviously that's a a prime pickup. My goodness, if you're like you know you're, you're struggling and you're 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 high on the waiver wire and you get a chance to pick him up, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, my three waiver wire pickups are going to be uh, Mark Sanchez, Mark Sanchez, Taylor Gabriel, um, and Daniel Thomas. And Taylor Gabriel's been a guy for the Browns that has been, I, I don't know if people know this, but he's been lighting it up. At first it was Andrew Hawkins, it was Miles Austin a little bit, then it was that Travis Benjamin for like mm-hmm. a week or two. And now it just seems like consistently, though, Taylor Gabriel keeps having better games and better games, and now he's starting to really come of age here. And he's, you know... Uh, you know, Josh Gordon is coming back, but it's going to be like it seems like Taylor Gabriel right now has been is trying to solidify that number two spot. So like everybody's battling for this two spot when Josh Gordon comes back because, you know, he's coming back like I believe it's yeah. 12. He should be able to play. But uh, Taylor Gabriel has yeah. been a nice, nice pickup. If, you, if you're looking for somebody like if you do have a T.Y. Hilton on a buy or you do have, you know, Deshaun Jackson on a buy, you know, it could be a good pickup because he's been getting a lot of targets. So let's move into the stardom. Yeah. Stardom portion of the show. Uh, who's your three qu- uh, quarterback must starts of the week? I have Carson Palmer, Ben Roethlisberger, and Andy Dalton. I'm going to talk about Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger has been on on roll. He's on fire <laughs> right now. Ridiculous fire. He's playing against the Jets. The Jets are not going to be able to stop him. I mean, Roethlisberger is going to have a game again that could be heading towards historic proportions of the 500 yards, five touchdowns again. <laughs> yeah, this guy, 12 touchdown passes in two, six touchdown passes, two games in a row. That's it. I've never yep. seen that in my entire, I've never seen that in my entire lifetime. Ever. Ever. Like I said, a roll. Yeah, that is, he's just, he's on fire. And he, believe it or not, he was actually in, he, I've seen him in some leagues not even picked up. Like he's just, he's yeah, on the waivers, and and I was in shock yeah. because he he's quietly been doing very well every week, and you know Antonio Brown's getting all these yards, and I was shocked to see him on there. I mean, obviously he's obviously he's a must. I mean, I'm sure he's picked up now by my by a lot of people who have other whoever quarter have other quarterbacks, but my goodness, I couldn't believe he was on there. So my well, that's the thing about him though is that he's he's kind of like in the Dalton category where you might have him on your bench. But if you do have that pretty good, that it's pretty good indicator. That means you had Manning, or you had Philip Rivers, or you have you know yeah, Brady. Yeah. You don't know when to play him, and yeah. that's why every time I look at the ESPN leagues and stuff like they will say like the percentage of him playing. I'm I'm finding out that he's been played in like less than 45 percent of all these leagues across all these different exactly. platforms, like Yahoo and CBS Sports. Because I guess nobody trusts him. <laughs> yeah, you don't trust him, and then next you know he's throwing. And this is one of those things. This is one of those weeks, like you, you know, you you go, oh yeah, I'm starting against the Jets, and and watch the Jets hold him to like a touchdown or something, something crazy like that. But yeah, I, no, I mean, yeah, I doubt it too. I think Ben Roethlisberger is going to go off. I think he's going to go off as well this week. <laughs> but but um, it's just one of those things that that's why people just can't trust him because it just seems like you know he he hasn't been consistent like this. But lately, I mean, he's been more than consistent. But my my three quarterbacks are going to be Russell Wilson going against the Giants. I'm just going to say a Cowboys quarterback against the Jaguars because I don't know which one's starting, and I don't think it matters <laughs> because the Jaguars aren't that good to stop the pass. <laughs> and even if Brandon Whedon plays, I think the Cowboys are still going to be successful. Um, and I also going to I'm also going to start Cam Newton this week against the Eagles. So I'm going to talk about Russell Wilson because yeah. Russell Wilson, you know, we were really high on him. For a few weeks there, he was just having these monster games where he's rushing for like 100 yards, throwing for 300, getting like three touchdowns, a couple passing, one running, or or vice versa. And and now the last couple of games he's been struggling. So now I yeah. you know, well the team's been struggling and he he's done good but then bad and you know he's just really inconsistent. Where he's playing the Giants now, the Giants just got lit up by Andrew Luck and they have problems. Prince Akimura's out. They don't, they lost another cornerback. They lost a lot of guys on defense. They have a lot of, uh, second stringers playing right now for the Giants. They're playing in Seattle. I don't see the Giants have any chance of winning this game. And I just see Russell Wilson going off. And if the Giants think they can just chase him and try to get sacks, it doesn't work like that with Russell Wilson. He's very elusive. And I see him gaining a lot of yards rushing and maybe a, a, possibly yep. a touchdown rushing as well, along with throwing. So he's definitely a must start this week. Who's your, uh, three starts for running backs? For three running backs, I got Jeremy Hill, 
I got Mark Ingram, and I got um, sorry, I got Reggie Bush. And I, uh, Reggie Bush should be back. I'm going to talk about Reggie Bush. Now Miami's defense has been playing phenomenal. However, like we we've been this theme about the revenge games is coming into play, and obviously Reggie Bush was part of Miami, and I think he's going to have a great game in the air. You know, he might not have the rushing yards that you want to see. Look, I mean, he'll probably only get 40 to 45 yards. But if he plays this game, I expect him to have a very good game for lots of yards from scrimmage, whether it's, um, you know, through the air, you know, catch a, uh, screen passes, etc. I, I think he's going to have a big game. Yeah, my three uh, running backs are going to be Steven J- Jackson going against the Bucks, Jeremy Hill going against the Browns, and Ronnie Hillman going against the Raiders. And uh, we'll talk about Steven Jackson because – he started off the season very slow, but slowly he's been, you know, he's been scoring the last couple of games he's played. He's been scoring. He hasn't gotten 100 yards or anything like that rushing, but slowly and surely he's been getting a lot more carries. And it's been a running back by committee there. It's weird because they have like Anton Smith. They have mm-hmm. uh, they have Jacquez Rogers. They just seem like they have like four running backs that they use, but he's been the one that they've been using actually the most, which is surprising to me because he was the one that was struggling the most at first. But, uh, you yeah. know, they're playing Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay gives up a lot of yards rushing. It's just ridiculous how much yards they give up a game. Their defense is just, I don't know what's going on with them, just in disarray. And I think this is the game where he actually might get 100 yards and a couple touchdowns. So he's definitely a must-start in my list. Who's your uh, three starts for wide receivers? we got Benjamin out of Carolina, Emmanuel Sanders, and Steve Smith Sr. Now I'm going to talk about Emmanuel Sanders. We talked about Wes Walker being a little banged up. It didn't matter anyways if Wes Walker's playing. Sanders has been on a roll. I, him and Peyton Manning, and it's funny because in preseason, they were talking about how they weren't on the same page. But now it seems like he's the most consistent target and favorite target of Peyton Manning. And I, I just think, obviously, they're playing the Oakland Raiders. And, I, you know, I, gotta, I expect Manning to bounce back from that loss from New England. And they're just going to light up the scoreboard. And Emmanuel Sanders can have a big game again. Yeah, my my, uh, my three wide receivers are going to be Roddy White, uh, Mike Evans, who are playing both playing against each other, and uh, Kelvin Benjamin against the Eagles. And we'll talk about Mike Evans. This is a good rookie. This rookie's been silent, also doing amazing for Tampa Bay. Pretty much the, one of the bright mm-hmm. spots on that team, who with not many bright spots at all. And um, he's nope. he's been playing very good. He was injured the first, I think, what the first couple weeks of the season, or, or during the season for at least a couple weeks. He was gone, came back, and now he's doing great again. And uh, the Falcons don't have really good pass defense whatsoever. Neither do the Bucks either. But the Falcons don't have any kind of pass defense. And I think Mike Evans might go off again this week. So who's your three uh, yeah, starts for? So. Who's your three starts for tight ends? I got Heath Miller, Jared Cook, and Greg Olson, and I'm going to talk about Cook. The Rams and Cardinals. That that game on paper might sound like it's going to be a snooze fest, but when these two teams hook up, I'm telling you, a lot of divisional games are like this. But in, being in Arizona, I, I just have a feeling that it's going to be a tighter game than it really looks on paper and I think uh, Cook is going to be the person since Arizona's defense is pretty strong I think you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, dump offs to him and I think Cook's going to have a big game especially around the red zone yeah those division games are always tough in the NFC West uh, the, my uh, three tight ends are going to be Vernon Davis against the Saints Jason Witten against the Jaguars Heath Miller against the Jets and we're talking about Vernon Davis he's been just horrible this year Minus the first game where he caught a couple touchdowns against the Cowboys, he's been just non-existent, either getting hurt or or uh, can't play or on a bye or just dropping balls or getting in front of teammates who are supposed to catch balls. He has been absolutely horrible. But he, there's one thing that's always been consistent about Vernon Davis. He owns the Saints. He always has his best games against the Saints, it seems like. And they're playing in the dome. Colin Kaepernick, I'm sure, is going to want to atone for you know the fumble at the goal line of the last game. And I'm sure he's going to want to light it up and throw it to Vernon Davis. And I don't think the Saints have anybody that can cover Vernon Davis. So he's finally, I think, going to get the game that 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 finally makes fantasy owners happy this week. Uh, who, who's your three stardom uh, defenses of the week? Got the Dallas Cowboys, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'll go ahead and talk about the Bengals. They're playing the Browns, and the Browns and Bengals, I, I just have a feeling it's it's uh, it's in Cincinnati. The Bengals' defense has not been what I thought it would be this season. But 
we even uh, Ben Tate has been a disappointment. The running game itself has been pretty disappointing. And I think that since that's the strong suit, Cincinnati stopping the run game, you're going to be seeing Hoyer throwing a lot of passes. And I just think the Bengals are going to be prepared for that. And I'm going to see a lot of picks and stuff like that. I think Cincinnati's going to have a huge game against the Browns. Yeah, for my uh, three defenses, I had the Dallas Cowboys against the Jags, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers against the Jets, and the New Orleans Saints versus the 49ers. I'll talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers playing your Jets. Jets are just too turnover prone. <laughs> They're just too it, – it, they just give up too many turnovers, too many three and outs. They don't really move the ball consistently And it, for me to, you know, nope. when, it just seems like whoever defense they're going to play is going to take the ball away. And there's always a chance for, you know, some kind of pick six or some kind of fumble return for a touchdown or something. And the way the Pittsburgh's playing defense lately, they've been playing really good. I just see them – I don't, I don't see the Jets really having any really chance in this game. It just seems like they keep the game close for, through a couple quarters maybe. They give you like some kind of hope, and then they just – I don't know what happens after that, or but they just lose it after that. So I no, like the, Pittsburgh the, the, the this week. The defense gets tired. I mean, the, the offense is so bad in New York that the, <laughs> the defense is actually pretty strong. It's just they're not going to have a chance when they can't – they're just tired consistently. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into the sit portion of the show. And uh, who's your three uh, sit quarterbacks this week? I have Kyle Orton, Eli Manning, and Brian Hoyer. And I'll go ahead and talk about Eli Manning. Eli Manning, he did have a good game against Indianapolis, which I thought he would. But now he's playing in uh, Seattle, in Seattle. And no matter who you are, whether you're Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, that just seems like that place, you just can't have a good game. And Eli Manning... You know, he's not any of those great, great quarterbacks. You know, he's not elite like he thinks he is. <laughs> and against Seattle's defense at their place, it's just going to look even worse. And I, I got a feeling he's going to have a bad game, a real bad game. I think Eli Manning gets a bad rap. The poor guy has no weapons. I mean, he's got the only weapon he's got is a rookie, Odell Beckham. That's the only guy who came to no, play yesterday. True. Everybody else dropped everything. Everybody else was just dropping balls everywhere. I felt bad for the poor guy yesterday. But um, my three quarterbacks <laughs> for sits are Kyle Orton going against the Chiefs, Matthew Stafford going against the Dolphins, and Eli Manning against the Seahawks. And I'll talk about Matthew Stafford. The Dolphins secondary is, I believe, tops in the NFL right now. They are awesome. That dude, Brent Grimes, is probably – he can arguably say he's probably one of the top – He's probably in the top three for cornerbacks. A lot of people don't even talk about this guy, but he is literally a shutdown corner. He literally takes receivers out of a game. And he mm -hmm. and I don't care if he's playing uh Calvin Johnson or Golden Tate, he's gonna whoever's gonna be the number one receiver that day, because obviously if Calvin Johnson ain't playing, Golden Tate's gonna play. I just have a feeling Golden Tate is just gonna have a, a it, it, it literally in store with him with Brent Grimes because he does, he's like he's just sticky he's just all over everybody all the time it just seems like he's always there so that's what helps that I mean, when you got a guy that could take away one part of the field or just one player out of the field and you could just play, the other ten guys can play defense on the whole rest of the field and not have to worry about one guy then I mean that helps the defense and that's why the Dolphins have been playing such good defense lately so who's your um yeah. who's your uh, sit them running backs of the week. Rashad Jennings, Ben Tate, and Chris Ivory. And I'll go ahead and talk about um, Rashad Jennings. He's supposed to be back this week, but he's he's back against Seattle's defense. And like I said, they, the game might get out of hand early, and they're probably not going to even run that much. And I don't think they're going to be using him in the passing right away. You know, they're not going to really test him out. So you're going to see a lot of Andre Williams also win the mix. They're not ready to hand the keys off to him all the way off just yet, and it's just a bad matchup. So don't even think about thinking that he's going to have a great game. Yeah, my my three running backs are uh, Darren McFadden against the Ra uh, Broncos, and Trey Mason against the Cardinals, and uh, Booby Dixon, Anthony Dixon going against the Chiefs. And uh, we'll talk about Darren McFadden because, or I'm sorry, I'll talk about uh, Trey Mason because um, the Cardinals are just shutting everybody down the run. Period. Like everybody, they even shut Demarco Murray down. I mean, I granted the Cowboys didn't, yep. I th didn't think ran enough, but still, the Cardinals are not afraid to throw sometimes nine, eight, ten people in the box, it seems like. They will do whatever <laughs> it can to stop the run, and the Rams are going to have to figure it out because they're not really that type of team that can just, you know, light it up in the air. So they're going to have to, you know, figure out a way to run that ball, and I don't think you can run on the Cardinals team right now. They just They're just too good against the run. So I think Trey Mason's going to have a long day on Sunday. 
who's your uh, three wide receiver sits? Dwayne Bow, Mike Wallace, and Odell Beckham Jr. And um, we already beat down the Giants, so I'll, I'll talk about Mike Wallace. I, I just think that the uh, the Dolphins in Detroit, I just think that's going to be a game where, you know, on paper you would think it's going to be a, a throw them in the air kind of thing. I just don't know, though, if Mike Wallace is just going to be somebody that you can depend on. And he's been like that all season long. He's kind of the Ben Roethlisberger of the – of the wide receivers where he's so inconsistent. You don't know when he's going to do good, when he's going to do bad. And I just I just don't see him being a fantasy option, to be honest, going forward against any team. But against Detroit, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, Bashar Matthews has been the man for the Dolphins lately. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm pretty sure better, I'm pretty sure uh, it's because of Wallace. Throwing, but uh, what's get Heartline also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just seems like Rashard Matthews is the one getting open. I think I think Mark Wallace just probably commands more attention. So that's what's happening, but but yeah, it seems like Rashard Matthews is the man right now for uh, the Dolphins. But you know, my my three wide Clay's receivers. Been the guy for the red zone. Yeah, and he's back. He's back again. But but my three uh, sits are going to be uh, Golden Tate against the Dolphins. I already talked about him with Brent, Brent Grimes, Odell Beckham Jr. against the Seahawks, and Eric Decker against the Steelers. And um, Odell Beckham Jr. He's been like I said, the bright spot for the Giants this year. He, you know, since he's been coming back, I mean, the first game he got, he got like two touchdowns. He got like a hundred yards receiving the last the week. He got like a hundred and what fifty something yards receiving yesterday against the Colts. Fifty six, I think. Yeah. yeah, he he's been playing great. Problem is now he has to play Richard Sherbin and company, and and in Seattle of all things, and they play really good press coverage. And so I don't think. I just don't see him getting any yards, really. I don't really see him doing that well. If anybody's going to get yards, it's going to be, you know, either tight ends or, or I don't, I don't really see any of that happening. The way the way that, that the Seahawks play defense, especially in Seattle, so yeah. I don't see I don't, much. Yeah, I, don't I, don't see, see, I don't see. I don't see the anything. Giants doing much of anything in this game this week. So I feel mm-hmm. bad for Eli Manning and the whole team this week. But uh, who's your three? <laughs> who's your three sit them tight ends? Well, I don't mean to, you know, pour some salt in the wounds, but Larry Donnell <laughs> is going to be one of them. Kelsey, Kansas City, and Delaney Walker. And I'm going to talk about Delaney Walker. Tennessee's playing Baltimore in Baltimore. And right now, the who knows who the quarterback's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be Mr. Selfie guy or if it's anybody else. But Mr. no matter Selfie. who you put up here, Tennessee's a bad <laughs> He's a bad. They're a bad team right now. And I just don't. Walker, all of a sudden, his valley just went away big time. He started off on fire in the beginning of the season, and he's flamed out, and I, he, I just don't see anything happening either there. Yeah, my uh, my sit tight ends are also uh, Travis Kelsey going against the Bills, uh, Jared Cook against the Cardinals, and uh, Larry Donnell against the Seahawks as well. And I'll talk about Kelsey. The Bills have been very, very good on defense, and they haven't given up much to tight ends all year. So I don't see – and with the way – Kansas City's game is they've it's all about the quick pass, all about the screen pass, all about the quick slants, and the Bills are a team that defends that very well because they're very fast on defense. Their linebackers are fast, and they can get to corners very fast. And I don't know if the, I, I see Kansas City struggling against a team like the Bills because of the way the Bills play defense and get after the quarterback, and with the way how the Bills play sideline to sideline. Now, if it was a type of team that throws downfield. Then you know I would I would say they give the Bills trouble, but I don't see Kelsey as that type of player, and I don't see Kelsey as the type of player that's going to be uh, doing much of anything this weekend against the Bills. Yeah. Who's your three sit them defenses of the week? I got the Miami Dolphins, San Francisco 49ers, and I got the Denver Broncos. And I'm going to talk about why the Broncos. The um, uh, you had them on your starter because it's Oakland, but they're playing at Oakland, and I, for some reason, this is always one of those games where the Chiefs or Broncos, when they play Oakland, the Oakland Raiders show up to play those kind of games when they're at home. And I just think that if the Broncos are pouring it on, then you're going to see a lot of scoring also by the Oakland Raiders. They don't easily just roll over and die and lose 45 to you know 10 or anything like that. I mean, even the, against the the um, Chargers earlier this year, you saw Oakland put up a fight. And I think if they're scoring 28 points, even if it's against the Broncos, that's going to be bad for your defense, and, you know, point-wise. So I don't see you should start Denver's defense this week. And yeah, my three defenses as well are San Francisco 49ers going against the Saints, Cleveland Browns against the Bengals, and Chicago Bears against the uh, Packers. And I'll talk about the uh, the Bears. I don't see them stopping 
anything this week. Aaron Rodgers coming time. I don't even care if Aaron Rodgers has a hamstring pull. I don't see them stopping that 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 uh, Green Bay pass attack. I don't see them even stopping the Green Bay run attack. I think Eddie Lacy is going to have a good game as well this week. So I, the only way the Bears, you know, get some points either on special teams or they get them from you know turnovers on defense, and they're not they're not going to get those kind of turnovers with Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't really he's not really a turnover prone guy. So I don't see the yeah, Bears yeah. doing much of anything going against the Bear, or I don't see the Bears going doing much of anything going against the Packers this weekend. So let's get into the sleepers part of the show. Who's your three sleepers of the week? James Jones of Oakland. Like I I talked about that with the Denver thing. Uh, Charles Sims, the running back for Tampa Bay. He should be activated this week, or he was activated. He should be playing this week against Atlanta. And then in that same game, I think Anton Smith. I think it's it's time. I I know we talked about Steven Jackson a little bit there. I just think it's time that Anton Smith, they're going to see what they have in him, and maybe it's finally time since Atlanta's been doing so bad that they unleash him. So we'll see. And my three sleepers are Bishop Sankey, uh, Joyke Bell, and uh, Kenny Stills. And I talk about Kenny Stills going against the 49ers. 49ers always struggle, it seems like, against uh, Drew Brees. Last year they played him very tight, and they had a pretty good game against him. But last year's Saints are not this year's Saints. And I just think that Kenny Stills going against that secondary, who's been very good. I believe they're number two, I think, in the league against the pass. The defense has not been the problem this year for the 49ers, but... Going against the Saints in New Orleans is not an easy place to play. And there's just too many weapons on that New Orleans offense. So I just think that Kenny Stills is going to have the game. Out of the three wide receivers, I think he's the one that's going to have the bigger bigger of the games. So that does it. I can see it. Uh, leave leave all your questions for fantasy in the uh, comment section. Don't forget to tweet us at Optimus Magnum and at Siggy, Siggy V, I'm sorry, <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> and... Uh, Message us both at the same time. It's easier for, you know, for one of us to be able to get to it at least, you know, or maybe we'll both get to it. But but at least if you message both of us, one of us will be able to respond. And uh, that's pretty much it. Anything you got to add? No, good luck week 10. It's almost over. Playoffs are only a few weeks away. So this is the push. This is the final push. Yep. And, oh, thank you for all the uh, – feedback and all the the uh ideas that you guys have been giving us uh we probably won't have enough time to do that this year for some of the ideas that you've been giving us but they are definitely put into a note, notepad and into consideration and we're thinking about doing a lot of different things for next year's fantasy football we might still do a lot more extra things this year too for playoff time and for stuff like that that's coming up and for anything but if you have any trade questions and things like that leave them in the comment section as well we'll answer any kind of you know we, we could try to be of help for trades and stuff like that, because this is the time of the year where trade deadline's coming up, and you can try to make that move that could push your team over the hump for the playoff push. So best of luck. Best of luck, Week 10, and uh, take care. Uh, uh, I was going to say Optimus Magnum. Look at that. JT Magnum and Siggy Guns, we out. Peace. Peace.